Hello everyone, uh, it's Dan Stanley here today and I'm going to be doing a takeover of Fit and Well's Instagram feed for around the next 30 minutes. I'm going to be talking about the topic, uh, which is particularly timely given our return to work um, from our work from home and COVID. And the topic of today's conversation is burnout. It's a topic that's important. Um, many of us are leaving our working from home offices and situations and we're throwing ourselves back into our careers and our professions with an expectation, perhaps subconsciously, of wanting to catch back up. So today I'm going to cover what burnout is. I'm going to discuss with you how and why so many professionals fall victim to burnout. I'm going to talk about the signs and the symptoms and the causes and I'm going to share with you some practical tips to move past perhaps a subtle sense of overwhelm and defeat the onset of what could be um, detrimental to your career, your business, your relationships and your health. Uh, and that is very much burnout. So what I want to share with you is, first of all, my kind of my currency in this topic. So often with today's day and age, there's so many thought leaders out there uh, on the internet, on social platforms. So I want to share with you just a little bit around what makes me credible in this area of burnout, which is our topic today. So I'm Dan Stanley and I'm the founder of Better Men. I work exclusively with men in high pressure roles. Typically, my clients are business owners and career executives that have gotten to a place in their lives where they, despite their successes, their technical successes, they lack time, energy, and space for the simple things that enrich their lives. And quite often, these guys are successful, but technically, they're, they're lacking the satisfy, satisfaction or the fulfillment that they thought they would have when they achieve their professional goals. I've been an award-winning army commando, a national sporting champion, and I've helped my wife organically grow a multi-million pound business. I've helped clients over the last three years to save their marriages, to either change or to reignite their careers, and in some cases, to s sell their businesses for seven-figure sums. So I feel as though I have a certain level of credibility in this area, and as we go into today's conversation, I'm going to share with you again the, what burnout is, the signs, the symptoms, the causes, how to avoid it. And we'll also have at the end of today's session, uh, a Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can pop them into the chat feature below. And I will share with you as we get towards the end of today's session, um, some of the answers that I have to the questions that are presented. So before we dive in, I want to share with you a little bit about my why. So Kind of, I got to a stage where I was 35 years of age, uh, seemingly successful to the outside world, but internally, no matter what I achieved in my life, whether it was the recognition and the accolades of my military career, or standing on top of podiums in sporting events, or even seeing the bank balance in a multi-million pound business, none of that ever gave me the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that I was craving. I never felt good enough. So I always tried harder and did more of the same things. And essentially, I fell victim to Einstein's definition of insanity. I was doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. You might now be returning to kind of your office or your business with a real sense of enthusiasm. But the chances are that you're going to take back the, the energy and the enthusiasm that you have right now and repeat some of the things that you've been doing in the past. And what COVID's done is give us an opportunity to really shine a bright light on something that I feel is an issue in modern society. Uh, and I call it the myth of masculinity of my clients. And it's that professional success will eventually equal personal happiness. That professional success will equal personal happiness. And I don't believe that's true. I don't believe it happens in that way. I believe that happiness and success, they don't need to oppose each other. But often what happens is when somebody's chasing and pursuing success at the detriment of their health, their well-being, their relationships, their life in general, is that they'll go past overwhelm and eventually they'll arrive at burnout. And burnout is a hard stop. You can't, once you get there, simply just have a good eight hours sleep uh, and then recover. So let's dive in. Burnout, in its most simplistic of forms, the way I perceive burnout is that it's essentially exhaustion mentally, emotionally, and physically. 
that you reach a place of mental, emotional, and physical exhaustion. And usually it's brought on by a prolonged experience of workplace stress. And the term kind of came to probably public, uh, public, public vocabulary in 1974 when uh, a chap wrote a book called, uh, an aptly named book, the, the High Cost of Achievement. And that was the first time that perhaps as a society uh, that we recognised that there was a cost of achievement and a cost of success. And over the time, what's happened between 1974 and probably 2019, actually, is probably the next significant milestone in terms of the dates around burnout, was that the World Health Organization classified burnout as a disease, as an occupational disease. They said that it stemmed from chronic stress. And I believe it's true because when we, when we look at burnout in its most simplistic forms as this exhaustion of mental, emotional and physical energies, what we're left with is that we've gone way past overwhelm and it leaves us feeling tired, drained, apathetic. If we don't listen to the symptoms at that stage, then we go past those and we enter a place where we lack self-confidence uh, and ultimately we corrode our levels of self-esteem. After that, if we still don't listen to it, then it really does affect our ability to function as a human being, to show up in the most important per parts of our lives, to deliver in, in terms of our family needs, to excel in our professions and ultimately we take our levels of functionality and performance and they just deep keep diminishing past overwhelm all the way down to rock bottom and some of my clients that have experienced burnout have literally shared with me in a safe conversational container that they've not been able to get out of bed for days and that their mind is so busy racing that they just can't function and there might be people listening to this even now live or the replay later that can that can recognize some of those symptoms in themselves, that they have a constantly busy mind, that they're lacking perhaps a self-confidence and self-esteem that they once had, that they carry workplace stress, chronically so, and that it impacts all other areas of their lives. So how and why does it happen? There's a quote that I want to flip around because the quote that you might sometimes see uh, thrown around on social media profiles is that success leaves clues. Well, I also believe that failure leaves clues. Um, and if we look at kind of the people that are maybe 10, 15 years ahead of us in, in our careers, what we can often see is, you know, people that sat at board level or in senior leadership teams is that they're probably generally speaking, um, probably a little bit dissatisfied, a little bit unhappy, uh, a little bit lonely. Um, maybe they're even divorced. Maybe things have got that bad that their relationships have, have, have come to an end. But a lot of these people, a lot of what they're doing historically has meant that they've arrived at a place that they're now at. And I want you to really understand that failure leaves clues. What these people have done in the past, uh, where they've over-indexed their work over their life, where they've over-indexed uh, the money, the financial gain from their careers or businesses over their health and their happiness, where they've over-indexed the urgent, their emails and their phone calls, uh, their tenders and their contracts over the things that are really important in their lives. Um, these things eventually catch up with people. When you spend years and, and decades and chapters of your life living a certain way, there's going to be consequences. And it's really important that we get to recognize these and proactively do something about it. So the reason a lot of people fall into this trap of pursuing professional success, expecting it to equal personal happiness, is because of the game of life. It's how we're raised. If you think about it all the way back to when you were young and in school, you know, the, the pressure that's on our abilities to perform at an academic level, which then means that we go on from kind of GCSE to A level to university to higher and further education. And we keep climbing this ladder until ultimately we have to get off that ladder of academia and get into the workplace. Whether it's a workplace where we join a corporate ladder or whether we start our own business, the expectation is the same, that we need to con con continue pursuing work as a mechanism to achieve a level of happiness that we want in our lives. We earn more money because we get promoted. 
We earn more money because we get promoted and we keep repeating that until we get on the property ladder. And once we get on the property ladder, we pay our mortgages, we upgrade our cars, we have nicer holidays, we buy expensive watches or handbags or heels, whatever it is that we do. But the outcome is that we land ourselves into the rat race where we keep working, we keep working harder and harder with the expectation that we will earn more money. But because we spend more money, our lifestyle the, the, the enrichment of our lives never truly happens because we get sucked into debt or kind of the, the rat race of keeping up with the Joneses. So all these things happen and I know that everybody listening to this now can resonate with what I'm talking about because it pretty much is the game of life that almost all of us play. And the harder we play in this game, which coincidentally there's no finish line to, there's no finish line to this game, the harder we play, the higher our chances of burnout. So burnout generally happens because people ignore how they feel. They ignore how they feel. When they kind of don't feel particularly good or that something isn't right or their intuition is telling them that something's wrong, they dismiss it. They try to suppress and reject those emotions. Uh, and what they do instead is they fall back into that trap of Einstein's definition of insanity. They keep doing more of the same things answering emails as soon as they get out of bed, working hard in the day, skipping lunch, pushing through the days, and the, the finish line becomes instead of five o'clock, it goes to six to seven. They miss putting their children to bed. Uh, and ultimately, the work gets the best of them and their life gets what's left of them. And, you know, I think now, I think the, the, the pre-COVID divorce rate was about 42%. And I know that from speaking to some of my solicitors that work in the legal kind of frameworks, uh, that they've been kind of run off their feet with divorce inquiries. I also know that from some research I did recently for uh, an article that um, from a male perspective, there's 8 million men now in the UK that feel lonely. Divorces, loneliness, poor mental health, you could argue are uh, all constructs of our tendency to prioritise work over life. So here's something I want you to remember, because regardless of whether you're below this age or you're above it, Research suggests from the Winona University that the most common age for somebody to experience burnout for the first time in their lives is 32. So if you're older than 32, think back to that time in your life. Generally, take a moment. What were you doing at 32? Had you just been promoted? Had you perhaps started excelling in your career? Had your business started gaining traction? If you're younger than 32, Take a moment and just consider what you want your life to look at, like what you want your life to feel like and what you'll need to do to have the life that you want at 32. Because that's the time that most people fall victim. I think victim is the wrong word, actually. It's the most time that people put themselves in a situation where they experience burnout. So there's a really interesting concept. And if you Google this, you'll get more information. But it's called the five stages of burnout. And I'm going to kind of run you through these just with a, a high level overview. The first is the honeymoon stage, and that starts when perhaps you're promoted or you're given an opportunity in your workplace to run a big project. Um, it's when you feel a sense of energy and enthusiasm. You might be running on adrenaline. It's when you're optimistic about what you've got ahead of you. So that's the honeymoon stage. After the honeymoon, the next level, the second, is the onset of stress. And um, that's when you're starting to feel a little bit of fatigue. There's a little bit of a reality check around where you are. You're starting to realize that you're spending more time than you'd want and like in work and that actually the rest of your life now is starting to feel perhaps less, feel less of the ways in which you'd want. I'm being careful of my language here because I don't want to, to challenge people today because I appreciate most of you don't know me. And what I want to do instead of challenging you is to call you forward into a state where you realize that burnout is a very real possibility if you over-index the wrong things and neglect the right things in your life. So we've gone honeymoon, we've gone the onset of stress. The next one is chronic stress. And that's when that exhaustion starts to kick in, when you're feeling mentally tired, when your mind is busy and you're finding it hard to make decisions, when you're emotionally exhausted and you just don't have the time or the availability to connect to your loved ones, whether that's your wife, your husband, your partner or your children. You just can't show up in the way that you want. What happens next is the burnout stage. 
And that's when the exhaustion really kicks in. That's when your immune system drops, when you start to feel ill, when you don't sleep particularly well, when your mind is busy, when you can't make decisions, when you find that you're short, you're snappy, you're irritable with people. Um, and that's when you're kind of in that burnout stage. Um, and if it's not corrected at this level, perhaps in the, those early 30s, you've gone through the honeymoon, the onset, the chronic stress and the burnout stage, if you don't rectify where you're at in terms of your trajectory at this stage, then the last stage is the habitual burnout stage. Um, what happens right now is that if we don't correct this, this pattern keeps repeating itself. This habitual pattern of kind of burnout, crash, recovery, re-energization, finding a new sense of purpose, kind of all these things happen, but they happen more frequently. And instead of them happening maybe every kind of three to five years, they happen every one to two. Then they happen every year. And then they happen multiple times a year. So if you're kind of intrigued around the five stages of burnout, uh, when you jump off this live today, just have a little look on the internet, do a quick Google search and take a moment to perhaps recognize, take a moment to perhaps recognize what stage you're at at the moment. Because this is kind of this perpetual wheel that keeps turning Hopefully you never get to four and five. Hopefully that when you get to chronic stress, you recognize it and you proactively do something about it. So I know that I've already covered some of the, the signs and the symptoms and things to look out for, but here's a few more that I want you to be aware of because as we go from working from home back into this kind of social space, we're, we're engaging with people, we're going back to events, whether they're personal or professional. Uh, actually, I was at Kasabian in Cardiff on Friday night, and uh, walking into a venue was kind of a realisation that I'd missed it so much that actually maybe even I had fallen into the trap of kind of submersing myself in work because that's where I was getting a real sense of purpose, purposefulness and fulfilment from. But when I walked into that gig, uh, the music was kind of, the, the beat was reverberating through my chest. I was like, wow, like, I need more of this. But the first thing I want you to look out for is social withdrawal, social withdrawal. You know, if you're sliding down that framework, those five stages of burnout to, towards kind of the chronic burnout stage, then it might be that you ignore your friends that you don't reply in WhatsApp groups or that you tend to start finding convenient excuses not to turn up to events or to social engagements because quite frankly, you haven't got the energy and perhaps subconsciously, you don't want to lie about how you're feeling in your life because ultimately, lots of people will always throw out the, the response to how are you, uh, I'm fine, you know, and there's nothing worse than being fine because it doesn't mean you're good, it doesn't mean you're bad. It probably means that you're kind of wearing this mask because you don't know how to articulate where you're at and what you're feeling. So you throw out the, the, the old kind of conversational fine, which often means that the other person will change the subject. They'll move away from inquiring about how you actually are. Uh, the next part is the denial of problems. So aside from the social withdrawal, there's denial of problems. Uh, what will happen here is that over time, our... In fact, somebody shared this with me recently. It's probably very apt to where we are today. Someone showed me recently that if you're in a hole, the first thing to do is to stop digging. If you're in a hole, the first thing to do is to stop digging. And I think often what happens is that people's self-awareness is kind of clouded because perhaps there's a reluctance to admit that they're struggling. So by denying these problems, what happens is that kind of all these feelings of perhaps anxiety, uh, a little bit of fear, a little bit of worry and concern, a little bit of loneliness and apathy, we try to push them all down inside of ourselves and hide them from what people are really thinking. And what happens as a result is that all that stuff just builds up and builds up inside of us. And at some point, okay, when we take our hands off the stuff we've been forcing down with inside of ourselves, it just all kind of explodes out. And all the stuff we've been trying to hide and avoid from our friends and our family and our colleagues and our bosses and our, you know, our, our clients, it all comes out in unhealthy ways. <clears throat> Another common indicator that you're perhaps carrying too much stress is very much around broken sleep. Um, you know, if you're waking at kind of obscure hours um, because your, your, your mind is busy and then you can't return to sleep, it's probably a clear sign that you've got too much, your cup is full, 
you're spinning too many plates and that you're carrying too much day-to-day -day stress into your evenings and then you're not able to slow things down and decompress. So if your mind is busy and you're waking and you're anxious, the chances are that that is going to have this kind of compound effect where not only is your mind busy, but the one thing that usually allows you to slow your life down, to have a bit of a kind of a temporary reset in terms of sleep just doesn't happen for you. And it's this negative spiral then that kind of ca carries on and carries on to a point where not only is your mind busy, but you're not sleeping. Um, because your mind's busy and you're not sleeping, you're not functioning in the way that you want and the way that you expect and maybe the way your life needs you to. The last point that I want to share here, which um, I think is particularly relevant given the, the lockdown restrictions, has been uh, coping strategies or unhelpful coping mechanisms. You know, I think the, alcohol, the sale of alcohol has gone up by something like fifty percent during lockdown. And what lots of people are doing is been kind of mask what they're feeling with unhelpful coping strategies. And whether it is kind of food, you know, have you put weight on during COVID? Have you gained more weight than perhaps you would normally carry? Have you drank more than you normally would? Have you kind of gone into this state of social withdrawal, which I mentioned earlier, where perhaps there's a, a reluctance to want to engage with other people? Because these are all kind of unhelpful coping strategies that sometimes because of society and convenience that we can fall into. Um, I want to segment the the symptoms into or the, perhaps the, yeah the symptoms into two distinct areas now. One of them is kind of external things that happen outside of us that then impact how we think and feel, and the other is how our thoughts and our feelings create our reality, i.e., what we have in our lives. So the first, the external causes. There's three of them. Is generally people slip into a state of carrying prolonged and unhelpful stress. Uh, and go through that, that platform of um, burnout, those five stages of burnout, if they've got too much work on. They're, they're carrying too much work from the, the emails to the client's expectations, to the boss's needs, to the team's, uh, the team's ability to be led. So too much work is the first one. The next is, is poor, poor management. If you've not got the right level of support, um, usually above you in terms of the leaders and managers that you report into, uh, or if you're at the, the top of the, the kind of the, the company org and you look down, you've not got support of those people around you, the leaders and managers, it often means that you're not going to have the space to do what you need to do. You're not going to have the support. You're not going to have people helping you to create the space for uh, inquisitive questions or reflective thinking. And uh, Ultimately, you'll get stuck. Uh, and the last part is kind of unfair treatment. Um, we started to realize now that kind of bullying in a workplace is, is, is actually quite commonplace. Um, and sometimes it can be uh, overt in where somebody will be kind of signaling you out and giving you perhaps more work and more responsibility. And sometimes this happens to introverts that are particularly good at their job. Because they're introverted, um, a bullying boss will know that they're not going to kind of push back or put in place any boundaries. Um, and because then they're good, they get the job, they just think they keep giving them the work uh, until the point where they get so swamped that actually they, they stop performing in their role. The internal causes, um, the first is victim mindset. When we kind of place ourselves at the center of everything that happens in our lives and make an assumption that everything around us, everything around us creates our experience of life. And, and when we become a vi in, when we fall into a victim mindset, we give away our power of change. We give away our ability to create meaningful change in our lives and move forward in the ways that we want. Uh, I always say to my clients that there's, there's only two types of people in this world. There's the first type of people that make life happen for them. And there's a the second type that let life happen to them. So, you know, take a moment, just literally, uh, an intuitive kind of gut check-in, you know, which type of person are you? Do you let life happen to you? Are you reactive? Do people tell you or expect you to live a certain way? Or conversely, do you make life happen? Are you assertive? Are you confident? Are you proactive? Do you plan? Do you do? And do you review your performance to keep moving forward in the ways that you want? So you can either let life happen or you can make life happen. And the last part is a lack of communication. If you haven't got particularly high levels of self-esteem where you can be assertive with the people that you need to be assertive with, then what can happen is that you, uh, you, you, you don't 
know or know how to establish boundaries in your life. And a boundary is quite simply, it's a, it's a conversation or a construct that protects your time, your space and your energy. And the way that you create a boundary is to get clear on what it is that you need to create the space that you want in your life. It's to communicate it to the people that might infringe in that space. Uh, and the third part is perhaps the most difficult. It's upholding your boundary. But whether you are kind of got this external stuff going on or it's more internal, the reality is if you don't take ownership of where you are and you're carrying chronic stress, you're going to keep slipping down those five stages to the point where you get to burnout. So... I want to share an equation with you, which is perhaps the first thing I want to talk about as we move into the practical steps to avoid burnout, which is our topic of the the live takeover today. The first thing is an equation. Um, Type this into your phone later on or write it down on a piece of paper, Uh, but it's an equation. It's pain plus reflection equals progress. Pain plus reflection equals progress. If you're experiencing some kind of uh, emotional or um, mental pain, i.e. you're carrying too much shit in your life, the chances are that if you don't do something about it, if you don't take the time to reflect on it, you won't know where it's coming from and you won't know what it's creating and what it's going to lead to in the future. So acknowledge the pain, okay? Then reflect on what that pain is, where it's coming from and where it's leading, okay? And what that gives you the capacity to do is to progress in the way that you want in your life. So pain plus reflection equals progress. Uh, And ultimately, if we don't take perhaps control and ownership of the progression we're making in life, then life will happen to us. And again, we'll fall back into that kind of victim mindset. The next thing I would ask that anybody to do that's kind of experiencing uh, maybe the the early symptoms of burnout, the the, the apathy, the lack of energy, uh, the little bit of irritability, or the people that are experiencing more, experiencing more chronic forms of burnout where there's you know a, a need to stay in bed or to avoid social interactions is to is to let people in. You know, this whole stuff around it's weak to speak is so archaic now, Um, particularly if you think about mental health. You know, anytime you see a post on mental health on social media, there's an abundance of people that are either offering support or advice. So it's not weak to speak. And we've got to start letting people in. Um, Particularly for the men that are listening to this, you know, there's a, it's a, it's a bit of a flippant comment, but I think it's very apt. It's, you know, instead of manning up, start opening up. And I think if we do that, If we start letting people in, we start sharing some of the stuff we've got going on. We start giving ourselves those little bit of uh, cognitive releases or releasing a little bit of emotional stress. We'll start creating deeper and more connected friendships and relationships as well because we're letting people in. We're asking for help or they're helping us in in the ways that we need. What I want to do is um, is just in a moment is hand over to any Q and A's that people might have. Um, I think it's important that there's an opportunity here for people to, to ask questions. So I kind of, I kind of want to finish off with this, just a bit of a recap on, of where we've been today. So burnout is quite frankly, is caused by an excessive and a prolonged exposure to stress. Uh, usually it comes from work. If we feel kind of a subtle sense of stress, and then it manifests into overwhelm and we don't correct it at this stage, then the only way we're, the only place we're going to it is burnout. And if we arrive at burnout, it's going to affect our, our performance and work, our productivity, our ability to get things done. It's going to affect our emotional component to connect to our wife or partners or our husbands and our children and our friends. Uh, and ultimately, it's going to diminish our sense of self-confidence, self-respect and self-esteem. Uh, and ultimately, if we don't have high levels of self-esteem, the chances are we can become quite passive in our approach to life. Because what we need instead is that assertiveness to make life happen and not let life happen. Um, look out for the signs and symptoms. Be proactive. Let people in, speak to people, take ownership of the big four, which I didn't touch upon, so I'll give you a quick overview now. The big four, when I speak to my clients, are sleep. You know, it's almost uh, a reset, a daily reset if you need it. Um, You know, a minimum of seven hours, minimum of seven hours sleep is ideal. Uh, If that means that you need to restructure your bedtime routine, then, then go for it. You know, ultimately, you know, you can either make it happen or you can let it happen, but seven hours sleep. Uh, The next is food, like no your kind of calorific rate, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're kind of um, desk bound or you're more active, knowing how many calories you need means you can put the energy into your body. Uh, The third part around this, uh, and also just on food, choose from the the, the right sources. Uh, 
I really mean this when I say it. There's very little excuse now for not knowing what good quality food types are. Um, the third is about movement. Get away from your desk, whether you're back in the office or you're working from home. Find a reason to move. Uh, move in the morning, move at lunchtime. Make it a non-negotiable. Make it something that you do every day without fail is that you move in the morning before work, you move at lunchtime. Uh, and if you get the opportunity in the evening, you know, go out with your, your partner or your, your friends. Take the dog for a walk or go and do something with your children, but move. And the last thing in the big four is connection. You know, when we isolate ourselves because of maybe some anxieties or fears or insecurities, all that happens is that we amplify whatever's inside of us. So let people in and connect. Um, if you're concerned about burnout, then, uh, or you're just interested because maybe it's for yourself or for your team or for the people that you manage or for someone that you love and care about, if you're interested in the topic of burnout, as I said, I would just do a quick Google search of those five stages of burnout and you can do a little bit more kind of diving into those. The next thing that I'd encourage you to do is to pop across to my website, which is www.better-men.uk. Uh, in the resources section, there's a downloadable ebook, which is all around burnout. And at the back of the ebook, you'll find that there's a, there's a tool there to help you kind of and guide your reflections so you can understand kind of where you've been and you can orientate yourself to where you want to go. So, um, yeah, kind of dive into the website, download the ebook, kind of a 15 minute read. It's got a really useful tool at the back of it. Um, and maybe, you know, there's a couple of resources as well that you might find useful. A couple of podcasts that I really enjoy that are kind of beyond the superficial uh, BS that we might experience on social media. Uh, the first, you may be familiar with it, is Stephen Bartlett's Diary of a CEO. He talks about the very real challenges of trying to balance work and life, which quite frankly we can't do. Um, uh, and he lets people in and he shares great guests, uh, honest, authentic conversations, and takes people to a place where they can recognize some of the inconvenient and uncomfortable truths in themselves. Um, another great podcast is The Science of Success. Uh, it's a US-based podcast series, but they have great guests on there and they corroborate all the kind of stories and all the things I'm talking about today, but from a scientific perspective, which is, is, is really quite useful. Um, two books that I'd recommend. Obviously, my ebook uh, over on my website, www.better-men.uk. Uh, and perhaps the, the other one I think is quite useful here. In fact, there's two. The first one is called The One Big Thing. Uh, the One Big Thing, which is about how you can get more, you can achieve more in life by doing less of the peripheral stuff. Uh, and the other book would be by a, a very powerful Texan lady called Bene Brown, and it's called Dare to Lead. Because often what happens is that the reason we become burnt out is because we haven't either led people so we can delegate and pass on our workload to other people, uh, or we haven't given ourselves permission to uh, be assertive in those sense of boundaries that I spoke about earlier. So I'm going to hand over now. If anyone's got any questions, just please pop them in the chat. I'm going to stay on the, on the live for just a few more minutes. So if anybody's got any, any questions, then just fire them into the chat. Let's see what we've got. We've had a few people talking about kind of... Um, the hospitality industry and the potential that, that creates for for burnout. Remote working is increasing the the risk and the frequency of burnout. I absolutely agree. We've got somebody talking about uh, seeing more people burn out around her age. Again, early thirties. Okay, here's a question. What would your advice be if you see the early signs of burnout in friends, but they resist your support? Just make yourself available. Um, sometimes what can happen is that if we try to, to fix or advise people and they're not ready for our advice or our wisdom to be shared, is it will create a kind of subconscious divide between us. So it, it could be that kind of say what you see uh, as an example, um, a friend of mine recently, he's got a, a high pressured, high paid job in London. You know, I said to him, I said, I can see that you're carrying more stress than normal. Uh, I can also, I also recognize you're less active in our WhatsApp group and uh, you've not been out for, you know, for, for a walk or bike ride in a while. Um, is everything okay? Uh, his answer was that I'm fine, which I had to accept because he didn't want to discuss kind of what he was experiencing. Um, my response to that was to him was that, you know that I'll never judge you. 
Um, if you want to talk about anything that you kind of experience or happening, then I'm here for you. And I'll be here for you indefinitely. So if you ever need me, all you have to do is just pop me a WhatsApp or give me a call. Another question. How do you see remote working uh, impacting on burnout? I think that what's happening behind kind of closed doors and inside people's minds all across the country is that people's uh, states of anxiousness are increasing and because they're not necessarily client facing in a physical sense they can kind of put this mask on they can kind of click on the zoom or on the teams meeting they can kind of present this facade to the people that they're communicating with uh, when in reality is they're probably struggling on the inside in their mind or in their heart uh, or in their life their physical life they're really struggling and a lot of what we're seeing now, if you kind of, if you pay attention to kind of some of the articles that are coming out here, maybe in the, the broadsheet newspapers, is that there's a real increase in kind of people reaching out to GPs to go into the general practitioners to, to seek uh, kind of support around the, the poor or ill mental health. Um, Calm, Campaign Against Living Miserably, which is a charity, a suicide prevention charity. Uh, their phone rates have increased by about 100%. Um, and we're starting to see now a kind of a lot of the impact of remote working kind of starting to come to the front of um, societal kind of knowledge. Um, I saw a something about the other day about the, 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 the number, the increase in the number of suicide. And I know that suicide is perhaps a, um, an extreme level of poor mental health. But at the same time, uh, it was, this was for men in kind of 2000, I think it was 2017, uh, the ONS, the Office of National Statistics, said that uh, 12 men uh, took their own life per day. And Calm, the campaign against living miserably, which are a fantastic charity, I have a quick Google of them, uh, recently reported that that figure has gone to, I think it's 19. So there's a real impact here. Uh, and one that can't be ignored. I'll see if anybody else has got any more questions. If not, then I'm going to uh, finish my takeover of Fit and Well's live Instagram feed. And I'm going to thank you all for your presence, uh, your patience and your engagement today. So I'll give it perhaps another 10, 15 seconds just to see if any questions come up. So I've been Dan Stanley and I'm a coach. I work exclusively with men in high pressure roles and I help them rebalance some of that workplace stress they've been carrying so they can have more time, more space and more energy in their, in their lives. Uh, if you're interested in anything I talked about today, and I'll talk quickly because I wanted to get as much in as I possibly could uh, to give you the value that I hopefully have, uh, pop across to my website. There is the ebook that I mentioned earlier. There's also a work-life balance diagnostic tool called a scorecard. So you can have a look at that as well. Uh, and um, I post content on Instagram and LinkedIn every day. Um, and if you're carrying a little bit too much stress in your man, then I also facilitate a monthly men's walking group called Men and Mountains. And you'll see a link on there to register on my website. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time, your patience and your engagement. And uh, yeah, be mindful of those signs of burnout. Thank you.